I'm Objectively Dan, and you are watching The Atheist Edge. Okay, so I just finished up uh, hole 14, headed to 15. Damn, this is pretty. This is, uh, um, there's two 18-hole courses right next to each other in Cedar Hill, Texas. Um, one is Beaver, and another is Coyote. This one's Beaver. It's a little bit easier of the two. Um, lots of woods, lots of narrow tunnels. Uh, I've gotten maybe three or four out of 14 holes. I've gotten maybe three or four pars, and everything else is bogeys and double bogeys. But hey, that's all right. I'm out. I'm getting some fresh air. Um, I just got back from the Faithless Forum in Austin, Texas. Um, that was a three-day event. Um, this was the third annual. Um, it's been it had been postponed twice. Um, so they finally had it and it went it went off great. I couldn't be more pleased. Uh, met a lot of new people, you know, hung out with a lot of people I had met before. Um, uh, there are some really good speakers. My favorite lecture of the weekend was Zara Kay. She spoke about Islam and World Hijab Day and it was really good. And right after that, um, she did a, uh, a like a quiz show thing halal or haram is it forbidden is it allowed in I islamic culture or is it forbidden and boy i thought i knew i've read the quran um in in two different translations um and i thought i knew the quran pretty well out of all those questions i only got like three right but uh oh and there was another one another bible trivia thomas westbrook did there's a lot of trivia questions and i only got three wrong so it's the kind of the opposite situation. I just need to work on my Quran a little bit more, I guess. Uh, I would love to get her on the show, though, Zara K. Um, uh, I hung out quite a bit with um, Nicholas Souter from in the End Time Show and Neil the 604 Atheist and uh, uh, there was a lot of great times. It was awesome. Uh, there was an after party it was at the Saturday night about halfway through the conference um, and there was, well, there was two after parties, one at Matt Dillahunty's house. So I, a bunch of us went over there and hung out for a few hours and then came back and hit the, uh, the Faithless Forum after party. And both were awesome. Um, Arden, I had never met Arden before. She's brilliant. I got to get her on the show too. I don't have no idea what we're going to talk about though. The sky's the limit. Um, the student Dr. Ben was there. Uh, I met a lot of really great people. And some that I had never even knew they had a YouTube channel, never knew they existed. So boom, they popped on my radar. And um, networking, it's great for networking. If you're a brand new YouTuber, especially, and you want to, you want to uh, get some ideas for collaborations, video collaborations with other YouTubers that have been a little, been around a little while longer, uh, this is great. I mean, my dance card is full for months to come. Uh, the networking is great.
I noticed something I'm gonna have something on the screen here right now but um, my Fitbit records a lot of things and one of them is how much sleep I get I didn't really think much of it and now that I'm in the middle of this process of playing disc golf getting out in nature and trying to get healthy again right um, I've noticed the more and more the importance of sleep and now that now the alcohol's cut out of my diet. Well, I did have two white claws over at Matt Delaney's house, and those hit me like a train, man. Don't go a month and a half with no alcohol and then just pound two white claws. Seems like not very much, but it'll knock you on your ass. But um, you know, not drinking alcohol throughout the now normally I'd be at this entire conference just loaded out of my mind at night. You know, the after party would just be a slurry, drunken fest. Man, there's something to say about keeping your mind clear and not overdoing it or not drinking alcohol at all. At the Faithless Form after party, everyone's, you know, everyone's got a few cocktails in them. They're feeling great, singing karaoke. But the next morning, that Sunday morning, uh, people are just dragging their asses into the, le into the conference room. And, and they're visibly hurting. Why do that to yourself? I don't know. You know what? After this program is done, I'm never going to go back to the the way I used to binge drink back in the Marine Corps or just here even more recently. I mean, the good outweighs the bad to actually not do that. You know, if you're going to drink, maybe stop at one or two and that's it. You will you will thank yourself in the morning. You'll get better sleep. So anyway, about sleep. Um, so on the screen right now, you're seeing uh, how my sleep used to look before I started this program and it's still not great I, you know sometimes you know my body sometimes just will sleep only three hours and then I'll just pop up I have no idea why so and I've heard Albert Einstein and Thomas Edison only got max four hours sleep a night but they didn't uh, I don't think they exercised a lot either I mean they were all brain you know you the more you exercise the more sleep you need but uh yeah I'm, I'm working on it it's a work in progress but um yeah, sleep, so important. It recharges you, refreshes you. Um, you can't, you function minimally with a minimal amount of sleep. And it depends on your age and how much activity you get. You know, if I were way younger, I would need a full eight hours. I don't anymore. Six is max for me. I mean, six, I'm, that's more than enough. Um, but sleep what you need to sleep based on your age and your um, level of physical fitness, a uh, level of exercise. And uh, I think right now six is real good. Five is okay. And if I hang around that, that, you know, I think that'll be fine. In the comments section, tell me if you think I need more than five hours of sleep.
if, if I if I play 18 holes of disc golf every other day and I'm putting maybe I don't know 7,000 to 12,000 steps on my Fitbit a day I think that averages out to like four miles a day it's not a lot of exercise I'm, I'm already down 16 pounds or something 16 pounds now so in fact I'm I'm farther along than I thought I would be at this point now I know I've got like 50 pounds total to lose, but 16, I mean, that's a start. And um, it's a confidence boost, you know? Um, once you start seeing the results, then it makes you, it drives you to try to keep going. So that's really good. The, really, the hardest part is getting started, seems like. Um, so I'm gonna try to get more sleep. Uh, I played after the Faithless Forum, before I drove back up to Dallas, I, um, I played around with a friend of mine in Austin there, and it was a city park right kind of downtown. And the holes, the shortest I've ever seen in my life, is called Wells Branch. It's an 18 hole course, but I mean, the longest hole is 200 feet. It's kind of almost like a kiddie course. And I still got six over par, so I'm, I still suck at disc golf. Oh my God. And I, I noticed in the comments section, um, a, somebody in one of the previous episodes said, Jim, why don't you um, throw more forehands? Well, you know what? Before I started this program, when I had all those bad habits, I was about 75% back uh, forehands. I was, a, I was forehand more than I was backhand. But I've unlearned all those bad habits, and I haven't relearned the right way to forehand, so basically I'm, I'm stuck for now. Um, I do need to start working on those forehands again, especially I'm a right-handed player so a forehand if you need to go right a forehand is you know it's, it's essential to your arsenal if you want to go right uh, if you need something to fade right uh, I guess that's it for now um, I'm loving this it had been it's been a couple years two three years since I've been at this Cedar Hill um, uh, Lester Lorch Park this is the beaver yeah, this is the beaver course, and the coyote is right next to here. Um, thick woods. It used to kind of intimidate me, but now, you know, I said, there's trees. If, I'm, if I hit a tree, oh well. The trick to throwing in the woods, though, narrow tunnels, is throw lower than you would normally. Because if you throw low and you hit a tree, you're not going to bounce off the fairway as far. But if you're if you get your disc high in the air, it hits a tree, it could go who knows off into jail, way into the cabbage and then you're th throwing two strokes just to get back on the fairway. So keeping it lower is really important.
Anyway, uh, hats off to the organizers of that Faithless Forum. It was, they knocked it out of the park. And, and Thomas Westbrook, I saw him just run around. I, you could see visibly he was stressed out, but man, he made it all happen. He made it happen. It was really, really good, uh, uh, really good production. And um, just minor technical glitches here and there. Nothing more than three or four minutes in between, in, in between uh, lectures. And um, a much bigger venue. It's in a hotel now instead of the Dallas Children's Museum. It, it was the biggest turnout so far. Um, I, there was some word that there might not be one next year. I hope that isn't true. Um, just the uh, amount of work it takes to put one on. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward if there is one, one in 2022. And uh, it, it seems obvious it needs to be in Austin. I, I, I wondered why the first two were in my hometown in Dallas. I mean, I was thankful, but uh, I mean, if, if atheism were Islam, Austin, Texas would be Mecca, Saudi Arabia. That's for sure. I mean, that's where it belongs. That's where it needs to stay. So um, I don't mind driving three hours to get to it. Some people, I mean, there, some of the uh, speakers, uh, the attendees of the conference came from, you know, England and uh, Canada. So three hours isn't that bad. All right, well, let's see, sleep. Sleep is important. You can be doing everything right, the diet, the exercise, the calmness, um, you know, just cutting the, the cheese, sugar, alcohol out of your diet, cutting, cutting carbs in half, getting out of the disc golf course, every other day or at least maybe two or three times a week. All that can be going smoothly, but if you're only getting two or three hours of sleep at night, you, you see you see on the screen uh, the, <laughs> my sleep habits. And, and they're changing now for the better, but I still got a lot of work to do. And it, it'll wreck you. All the good things you could be putting in, and then that can wreck you. So it's, it's a juggling act, keeping everything in, in balance. All right, I will talk to you all next time.